Um, hello and welcome back. Today we have a fascinating plant to talk about with a kind of heartwarming story behind it, I guess. So, like the jack in the pulpit, this plant is in the Aram family, which is Areshi. However, unlike the genus Arasema, this plant is in the genus Amorphophallus. And um, this uh, genus name is somewhat self-explanatory. Amorpho, as in the word amorphous, refers to a weird or misshapen quality. And I think we all know what this word refers to. And because all the Aram family has a spathe and spadix, for their inflorescence. The um, spadix resembles a uh, certain part of human anatomy that gives this part its name. Personally, I don't see the resemblance and I am slightly concerned uh, if people do, but it is what it is. Someone already named it, can't really be changed. And this particular plant is called a more Fophallus onsaculei. So, the, the genus Amorphophallus is known for producing tremendously large flowers. Well, they're not actually flowers, they're inflorescences. So spathe and spadix together make up a flower. So this is going to be an abysmal drawing, but here we have a spathe, uh, and there's a spadix, and then the entire thing is on a stalk called a peduncle. And the spathe and spadix of Amorphophallus titanum as the name implies, reach tremendous heights of approximately 10 feet or 3 meters. And if you were to look over here, you would see the um, petiole, the leaf stalk, of a juvenile Amorphophallus titanum. I have been growing this plant for several years. It's quite forgiving but it still does have another seven or eight years to grow before there's any hope of a flowering event. Uh, these little splotches here are a fake lichen, I guess, to make it look like it's a woodier tree, not just a single freestanding leaf. But that's beside the point. We're not talking about the big one right now. Instead, we're talking about this one here which is the very, very, very smallest of a genus of quite large plants. So, this plant was discovered in Southeast Asia in 2003 or 2004 on an expedition by Aram expert, Alan Galloway. Alan Galloway, um... Then another Aram expert, uh, Petra Schmidt. And lastly, an uh, expert on the ginger family, Anop Onsakul. And as they were walking, uh, Alan Galloway discovered a small Amorphophallus species with a red leaf. This was approximately a foot tall, and he this one eventually became Amorphophallus galloweii. However, as uh, Mr. Ongsakul here, Anop Ongsakul, was attempting to continue his search for ginger plants that he was more interested in, he walked approximately two or three steps when he discovered a very tiny Amorphophallus species and recognized that it was not a seedling, but in fact, an adult, and this one became Morophallus onsiculii. So, now that we have introduced the 
circumstances for this species discovery, we can talk a little bit about it. Now, I want to make clear that this entire structure, this whole thing, is just a single leaf. If you look closely here, these little bits here, they are in fact just leaflets. So, if I lift the pot up, you can see this is a petiole, or the leaf stalk, for one highly compounded leaf, and then this highly compounded leaf contains at least a hundred, maybe two hundred leaflets. This is a very common setup to the genus Orphophallus, so the titanium I have, while it looks kind of ugly right now because it's tired and wishes to sleep, and as such it's kind of turning brown as it goes dormant, that too is a single leaf that will reach heights of six meters tall, and this one is rather unusual among the genus because most of the dwarf species are approximately one foot tall, or one third of a meter, and they resemble babies, so if you were to look at this one here, you can see it has far fewer leaflets, only a couple dozen. Now, even this far outnumbers the leaflet count of most other dwarf species, which will have five, six, maybe seven leaflets for the most part, even on a mature specimen. So, Orhophallus onsiculii here happens to have one very large leaf. Or not large, it's actually the smallest leaf there is in the genus, but it is the adult form leaf. The, it has the same form as a large leaf would, just in great miniature. Um, this genus, or this species is quite rare in captivity because they were only discovered recently and have not been cultivated for very long. However, they are rather prolific. So if I lift this up, you can see uh, this one here, this one here, the large one, and then this little tiny guy emerging from the base of the soil there. And this is just in a single pot. Uh, not all of them have woken up yet, and I also have three or four other pots that are more well populated than this one. Last count I had, there were 30 of them as little tubers. So, for cultivation advice in this plant, I grow them in a mix of standard potting soil, peat and perlite, under lights if possible, uh, but in the shade if not. They are a tropical species, so they don't necessarily have um, a season to grow exactly. <clears throat> they will go dormant as they feel like, uh, and they will emerge as they feel like. Their growing season is every bit as short as they are, so they will emerge for perhaps two to three months at a time, and then they will go dormant, which I believe is a way that they make room for the next one. They are extraordinarily prolific. Um, each time or each year they grow, a large one like this plant here will turn into approximately, I'd say, four or five more. And they don't require very much fertilizer. In fact, based on experiences of some friends of mine who I have given these to, they appear to do better with less. Less is certainly more in this case, and I use a highly diluted. 20-20-20 fertilizer for them. But that isn't necessarily the most interesting part. The reason I chose to do this video today instead of some other day is that this big one here in the center of the pot is in fact flowering. So if I were to zoom in as far as possible Excuse me, gotta get my pencil again to point stuff out. You can see a spathe. Spathe here is elegantly veined, I believe, although perhaps my hands are a little too shaky for you to see that. It has a small uh, dark coloration patch in the bottom. Uh, this is to attract pollinators, I believe. 
as well as possibly to shield the delicate flowers here from ultraviolet radiation, which would unfortunately sterilize them. Zooming in even further, uh, well beyond the point where I can meaningfully point things out, and perhaps beyond the point where I can focus meaningfully. Ah, there we go. It's still even the slightest movement of my hands, which are not the most stable, um, will cause problems, but you can see individual flowers. Now, this plant has separate male and female flowers. They usually open on different days, so that this species will not succeed in self-fertilization. Now, let's see if I can zoom back in there without shaky camera. That should focus unless it insists on moving again for some reason. There we go. So you can see some of the vein patterns in the spathe. You can see the very base of the spadix. If I lift the plant up slightly, you can see the peduncle, which connects it to the ground. Um, this is connected to the tuber of the plant uh, beneath the soil surface, so you can't see the connection, although it does emerge from the same place the leaf does, and also, quite unusually, among the Aram family. If I were to zoom back out, um, you could see that this plant has a leaf, or sorry, not the Aram family, only the Amorphovallus genus. This plant has a leaf and a flower at the same time. In most cases, uh, like say, Titanum, uh, konjac and so on, they will have a flower first and then a leaf uh, a couple of months later, not a leaf first and then a flower uh, emergent a few months later, but being occupied at the same time. So simultaneous leaf and flower is quite rare. Um, then, additionally, uh, this species uh, this is actually fully grown, approximately, um, I'd say about five and a half inches tall, maybe six. And then the entire inflorescence from the top of the peduncle to the end is about one inch. So, eh, maybe even smaller than that. Uh, we'll call it uh, 0.8 inches, about uh, two centimeters. So. That is the ultimate conclusion of a brief ramble about Amorphophyllus oxyculi. They are one of my favorite plants because they're quite elegant despite being small and easy to care for. And I hope you tune in later. Have a good evening.